in the project, uh, Kaihai Kaihai from Japan, works for NEC, uh, was going to have a talk today about uh, his work for the last two years on security enhanced PostgreSQL. But unfortunately, he couldn't make it, so uh, I was drafted to uh, help out and give the presentation. So while I'm not an expert on PostgreSQL, I know s -Links pretty well, so I can sort of uh, map my lack of knowledge in one area by my knowledge in the other, I think. Also, um, so we're we'll talking in two parts. The main part will be uh, the, the slides that Kai, uh, Kai Kai presented, and uh, then the, uh, the end I'll give a quick demonstration of SE PostgreSQL, uh, which I'm running on another laptop. And if anyone's really interested, we can uh, get outside after my talk, and I'll give you that you know, hands-on access to the laptop. You can try your own stuff on it. Although uh, I'm not sure how much of it's uh, tuned directly to the presentation, how much of it will be a general configuration. Getting close. Why don't you start now? Okay. So uh, Kai Kohai works for the uh, NEC OSS Promotion Center in Japan. Uh, he's uh, been uh, recogni recognized for his work on Postgres Guru by the Japanese government. They've uh, certified him as a, a genius programmer, which is the title they give to people uh, like him. There's, uh, I think, perhaps uh, a dozen or so each year who receive that title and uh, some sort of uh, financial grant towards the, their ongoing work. So he's doing some seriously good stuff, uh, recognized by the Japanese government. He's a primary uh, developer of SE PostgreSQL. Uh, so it's basically his idea to uh, do a project. Uh, I believe that uh, he got support from, from uh, NEC management in this project. And he's been working on that for the last two years. Firstly, he was uh, designing it, implementing it, testing it, writing the policy, working with the, the SE Linux upstream developers, uh, mostly NSA, NSA people. Was some input from people like myself, yeah, which really uh, in the same mailing list. He's done a lot of other uh, uh, kernel work as well, uh, or other general Linux work. Uh, one thing he's known for is uh, making his Linux work better on SP machines and other big machines. Uh, also, he made work on small machines with uh, Excel support in the uh, general Flash file system too, and on BusyBox. Now, the, the background of uh, the, the project. Um, the aim of the SLINX project is to have a, a uh, flexible mandatory access control system for all data on your machine. And the idea is that if you decide that uh, two uh, users who have different uh, security needs shouldn't be able to communicate with each other, so for example, user A has some uh, top secret data and user B has only secret data, you want user A to send data to user B, and you want to uh, prevent this, this inappropriate communication via all methods. So SLINX started off with just the, the fastest controls. So if uh, a, a top secret user writes to a file, a secret user can't read from the file. And uh, you send that to directories with, with point sensitive directories. So you have different versions of a directory like such temp being seen. So uh, data can't be exchanged through, through uh, file names. And um, uh, also it supports other methods of communication, such as uh, Unix domain sockets and TCP sockets. So we've got uh, local networking. So you send a pay of data, either a, a TCP connection or a UDP uh, datagram. Uh, it'll have a label on it. The label can be uh, stored with IPsec, so it can't be modified in transit. And the receiving machine will then have its policy to determine whether that data should be allowed to be received or not. But uh, one thing that's until uh, Kai got his um, uh, work release released, what one thing was missing was a database support for this. So uh, you could have two users who can't talk to other, can't communicate via uh, sharing files, they can't, can't communicate via Unix main sockets or TCP sockets, but uh, they can write out the database and read it back again. And that sort of uh, uh, breaks it all. So of course we want to solve a problem. And this is a problem that has been, I believe, solved uh, by some of the proprietary databases in the past. So I believe the database that we were running on uh, offices like Trusted Solaris uh, years ago, they were doing these things, but there was nothing free. So the aim was to make a, a free solution that would uh, provide the strong separation of uh, data from different levels right through the database. And then you send that up to the high end as well, up to, to the web application stack. So uh, you could uh, log into a web application and the context you use for your login to the web application determines what, access, what data you see from the database. But I'll that later on. So um, the, the value of the information is um, uh, determined by the, what, the, what the contents of the data are and not the way to store them. So uh, the database uh, might have some, some uh, very important data. Depends on your configuration, of course. And of course, also, if the database allows uh, inappropriate communications, you could have uh, two, two programs which, uh, share important, which use important data for other, uh, in other ways, such as files on disk, using database as an inappropriate uh, covert channel. And so we have uh, consistent controls uh, for all methods of sharing data. 
One of the uh, advantages of SE Linux is that you have a, a policy language which has rules determining that, uh, which uh, d uh, types of processes, which are known as domains, may access which types of files or other data. And with uh, this thing's policy sent to the, to the database, you have the same, t have the same type labeling and the same uh, labeling of uh, confidentiality levels uh, assigned to all data right through the system. So you don't say, um, I, have, I want to use uh, a, a login username to access my database and to use uh, Unix permissions uh, user and group modes for a files on disk. You said you have uh, access to, to read data by pure Linux types, which applies to both of them. And you have policy uh, language, which allows you to then analyze the policy and say, um, uh, ask questions such as, I have two domains, can I talk to each other? If so, uh, how can I do it? And you get the result saying, you know, they can have a certain access to each other via Unix main thoughts, so they access through files and disk. Then you ask yourself, are these things appropriate? And should we shut them off? Whereas with uh, Unix permissions and the traditional database permissions, there's no way of analyzing, uh, no central way of analyzing what access is granted. And any way of analyzing is probably going to be a, a bit of a hack and not going to give a, a consistent result. Okay, I think I've covered this slide already. Oh, it's an animated one. Now, uh, one term we use in EC Linux is the term the object manager, which is used to, uh, also known as a trusted object manager, which is used to enforce EC Linux access controls. So in this case, uh, Security Enhanced PostgreSQL is one of uh, several object managers that are available, and uh, it will ask the EC Linux kernel whether certain operations should be permitted or not, and then enforce the access controls. So we call it object manager because PostgreSQL is actually what's enforcing the access controls. The kernel says certain operations should not be permitted, and certain other operations should be permitted, but the PostgreSQL has to actually enforce this and make sure that uh, when the results are returned from uh, database queries, they are the correct results. So here, here an example in the diagram of a, uh, a classified user process and unclassified user process. And so uh, both accessing the, the database. And uh, we have uh, uh, the uh, dotted lines are indicating access that, that aren't going to be granted, and the, the uh, solid lines indicate access that are permitted. So the, uh, in this case, the uh, classified uh, information can only go through uh, these files and disks that are labeled for that, whereas the unclassified user process can't read them. And you have the, at the bottom layer, have the SE-Linux kernel policy determining which things are permitted and which are, are denied. So the, the big feature of SE, SE PostgreSQL is system-wide uh, consistency. So you have the entire system running the same policy, analyzed with the same
Sorry about that. Okay. In, in some memory space, which means uh, faster access. Usually for a database server, I think that uh, the speed of a, of a kernel uh, call isn't uh, really much of an issue. Because if you compare to, say, the, the amount of time taken to um, uh, do any sort of disk seek, so any read from disk, uh, the, the time taken for a bunch of uh, kernel uh, requests, which will all, all return immediately, is negligible. However, there are some possible corner cases. If you have a database supposed to reside all in RAM or on a, a flash storage device, then you might uh, want higher performance than that. And there is an option to, to uh, have a copy of the entire policy in the application's address space. And then that means the, the database server would not need to make a kernel call. And uh, I'm not sure uh, what the performance implications of this are, whether uh, the overhead of making a few extra system calls is enough to justify doing this. Uh, for another related project, there's uh, work on the moment to, to make the uh, XBNO system be a, a, a trust object manager. So if you have X server uh, enforcing Xilinx X controls, which means that all data flows via X uh, are mediated by Xilinx policy. And that means, for example, if you move your mouse, every time you move your mouse, there's about 100 different Xilinx X control checks. And for this, they have uh, the X server having a copy of the S-Links policy related to it. Because you can't have uh, hundreds of uh, system calls for every mouse move. Because uh, it just uh, wouldn't scale. For a database server, I don't think we're, we're uh, at that stage yet. Not this stage of the development, at least. But it's something that could be easily put in later on, uh, uh, based on the results of benchmarks, et cetera. So the next issue is the, uh, how the security policy works. So there's a set of rules managed by AC Linux. And each rule is very simple. It's saying uh, whether an operation is to be allowed, denied, audited, or don't audited. And uh, the, the uh, type or the, the, the domain of the, the um, subject that is performing the access. So it's the, it could be the, the domain name of a process. Uh, so one example is local underscore login underscore T for uh, the login program or uh, PostgreSQL underscore T for the, the database server itself. I'm going to, uh, the type of the uh, object being accessed. So for example, if the Postgres uh, server is trying to write to logs, I want to access uh, var log underscore T, the type of uh, default type used for slash var slash log. Then you have the, the uh, object class, which for example, uh, when it's writing to logs, you access the, the, the uh, directory for the logs, and the, the object class is uh, d uh, dir for directory. And you have a list of access to be granted, which can be read, write, execute, etc. And there's uh, quite a number of these rules that determine uh, what access to be granted for every operation. And every uh, entity in Linux has a what's called a security context. The security context has uh, three main parts. There is the uh, type, which also known as domain, in the case of a process. There is the role, uh, which limits. Uh, what uh, types are, uh, are permissible. There is the SLinux user ID, which uh, may be the same as a Unix account name or may not, depending on your configuration. Usually not, with the way things uh, usually work nowadays. And then there is the uh, uh, range for MLS or MCS, which is uh, for uh, access to confidential data. I'll explain more detail later on. So basically, the, uh, at the bottom of the screen here, we have an example of a, a context. System underscore U is the SLinux uh, user name. Object underscore R is the role. Uh, object underscore R is used for the role for every file on disk, because currently roles have no meaning in terms of uh, persistent storage. Uh, this may change some future time, but for the last eight years, it's been that way. And PostgreSQL underscore DB underscore T is the file type. That's the, the type used for the main uh, PostgreSQL database storage. And unclassified is the uh, level. And uh, the um, uh, the level or a range can be a set of two levels, a level and a high level. The low level is used for uh, MSX uh, control checks, and the, the high, which is known as, also known as the uh, clearance, and uh, the high level is, or sorry, the effective clearance, and the, the clearance is the high level. And in some situations, you may uh, access up to your, your uh, uh, the high level of the range. But that's going to be too complex. I'll go and cover this, this talk. And uh, they also have a set of categories. So in the default policy, we have up to 1,024 categories. And this means there's uh, two to the power of 1,024 combinations of categories that could be uh, used. And so the one way of doing this is you might have a, a category for every project you have running. And you have, uh, say, 100 uh, projects, one category for each one. And that way you can have separate access controls granted to every project. And uh, a user could be assigned several different projects uh, arbitrarily 
and be able to access those projects and nothing else. Whereas there's, uh, most of our access trauma heads don't allow that flexibility. Now, the way the policy works is SC Linux makes the, the decision, and uh, the object managers uh, all follow the same uh, decision paths. So, uh, if you have the, uh, and assume that you design the policy correctly, you decide that, decide that certain uh, domains can't access certain other types, and th this rules will apply both for database access and for file and disk access. So, you won't allow access through one method and not another. So, here, for example, we have uh, uh, system calls being used to access uh, files and disks, uh, network shares, shared memory, etc. And on the right, we have SQL access. And I'm showing that uh, whichever way you exit, the same access controls are enforced. Now, here's an example of the security label system column. Uh, the design choice was that to um, have an extra column uh, added to every uh, database table by default, and which uh, has the S Linux uh, context, security context of the, of the row. So here we have, for example, uh, row ID 1 is a read-only uh, row. So it means the unprivileged users can read it but not write it. Uh, row three is the regular table type so that they can uh, read and write. Rows uh, five and six are the, the same regular table type but uh, classified access. So users who don't have classified uh, level access uh, can't see those rows. Is that actually stored as a string or is it <coughs> some um, I believe internally uh, the um, they have a separate table that's uh, in, in the system tables, and uh, that maps uh, object identifier numbers to the strings. And so in the store, that ID number instead of the string. It saves a lot of disk space. Something like that, yes. I, I think it would be a, a four. This is um, actually s similar to um, what AC Linux used to do for files on disk. So before uh, AC Linux moved to using etc. For, for file labeling, uh, in uh, what I call version 2 of SE Linux. Version 1 of SE Linux um, modified the XT2 file system to store labels of files on disk. It was a temporary thing, it's good for development, but obviously not going to be released like that. Uh, version 2 uh, had uh, its own database stored in files on disk, which mapped uh, security context to uh, ID numbers and used ID numbers on the files to, to label them uh, and uh, match them up to, to the ID numbers. Uh, that was also a bit of a hack and, and uh, wasn't going to be accepted upstream. So the latest version now is to use X adders, which are merged together internally by ext3 code. So if you use the ext3 file system, you have to have 1,024 files being labeled by C Linux, only using one block of disk space for the X adder. With XFS, however, um, you can use more. <laughs> but that's our story. We won't go into that now. <laughs> so anyway, yes, we have this extra column to, to label every row. And so this example has a select statement saying, select security label, comma, star from drink. If you just said select star from drink, you'll get the same result as you would expect to see from a non-SE Linux, uh, non-SE non PostgreSQL database. Uh, the uh, security label uh, column is a column that doesn't appear in the default set, so selecting star doesn't uh, show the column existing or return its results. So therefore, converting from uh, a non-SE Linux version of PostgreSQL to SE PostgreSQL, your database queries will return the same results unless they specifically ask for different results. Um, I, I think that PostgreSQL has its own extra columns for some other things anyway, but I'm not really a PostgreSQL person, so, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm the only person who asks about PostgreSQL details, but uh, I believe that in the context of the way PostgreSQL works, uh, this is a, a good design. Uh, also, one thing I should mention at this stage is that um, there is a um, uh, the PostgreSQL access control framework being developed, which SE, Linux, uh, SE PostgreSQL is using. I believe that framework is largely developed by uh, Kagai uh, as well as part of his work. So this framework is going into PostgreSQL in the 8.4 branch, I believe. Um, the, the, uh, web, I was reading the wiki page last night from the PostgreSQL web website, which was saying that you can download the 8.4 source right now, which has SE PostgreSQL on it. I haven't downloaded and verified it, but the wiki page uh, seemed to indicate that this is already a standard feature in uh, the PostgreSQL tree. Not compiled by default. Apparently, you have to type uh, .configure uh, minus minus with hyphen SE Linux or something. But I mean, this is a you know, standard source code. It's like uh, SE Linux in, in the uh, kernel.org source tree. Uh, your kernel from uh, some distributions might not have SE Linux included, but Linux's kernel tree has the source code. Can you 
which is a, a huge thing. So uh, I believe that uh, SC PostgreSQL is already in uh, the PostgreSQL tree, uh, largely because it's, got a, a, it's, it's based on a standard access control framework, which uh, has some similarities to Linux security modules framework used in the kernel. I think possibly for similar reasons. Uh, I think if, if uh, Cargo had said, hey, let's have, a thing to, uh, let's have some code to do just SC Linux stuff, possibly the, the response from PostgreSQL people wouldn't have been so great. But he instead proposed uh, a framework so that any uh, extension to access control could be uh, written. And uh, he's got one example of one that works, which is SC Linux. And I think that a lot of people saw the benefit in that. And uh, I believe there is some work uh, going on about uh, getting uh, some of the post sorry, the, sorry, some of the uh, open Solaris access control methods uh, in, uh, support in this. And also, I think there's some interest from the uh, Trusted BSD project, or what do they call themselves nowadays. So there's a few different uh, projects out there to, to uh, add uh, manager X control systems to uh, Unix systems. And they can all hook onto a PostgreSQL now. So if you want to do something better than just uh, the, the standard old Unix, uh, standard old database X controls, PostgreSQL thinks a good framework for, for it now. Um, one thing to note, though, is that uh, this is only a compile time change. So if you had a PostgreSQL compiled without AC Linux support, uh, you have to recompile it to enable AC Linux, which if you got the source, is not that a, uh, much of a big deal. But the alternative would be to have a module you could load in uh, at runtime or uh, just restart the server or something, and that uh, wasn't chosen. Now, one thing I should note is that um, in, in AC Linux, when you create a file on disk, the default, in the absence of any policy or request to do otherwise, is the file will have the same context as uh, the, the, the same type, sorry, as the directory was created in. So if you create a, a file under a, a directory uh, labeled user underscore home underscore t, the file will have the same type, uh, unless the application requests a different type or there is a policy specifying it. So you can have policy rules saying that uh, there's supposed to be an uh, automatic domain transition when you, when you, when you um, uh, create a file. And so whenever when uh, a, a, a process of domain A creates a file in a, in a directory of a type B, it will use type C for the file. And if you have policy saying that, then that, that'll be the default action. And then, of course, an application can request something different. You can say, I want to create a file and a certain type use. And requesting that type may fail, because the, the, the security policy may say that the application uh, of type A, of domain A, cannot create a file of type B, so the request to, uh, to uh, train the next file uh, could be uh, denied. Then there is a rule saying uh, which uh, uh, database you, which directory you can take, create it under. And they can also uh, reject it at creation time. We have the same thing for uh, PostgreSQL. By default, if you create a, a, a table, you'll have the same uh, type as the database. And if you create a, a uh, uh, and the column, each column in the database will also have the same type. Uh, but, and uh, then when you've got the, the table running, you create a, a row and also have a default type for that. But the application, uh, you can have uh, domain transition rules and say that if a certain type of, of uh, application uh, is used, a certain amount of applications used to create a, a table or a column or, or row uh, to use a, a different type, a drive type, or the application can make a request and say, database server, please create me a, a new row. I want to use this particular security context. The database server might say no, because it might have policy rules saying that it's allowed to do that, but this is a, a, a request. And within the range of types that you're allowed to, use, to write to, you can make the request. Now, uh, the, one of the way this is uh, implemented is there's, there's an API uh, called getPeerCon in AC Linux, where you to get the context of uh, a peer you're talking to via various in post communication methods. So you, you can uh, request for a Unix main socket and say, what's the context of the other end of this socket? That's what, what uh, is used for a local host uh, PostgreSQL connection. You, know, you have a, a Unix main socket being used and just ask for the uh, context of the process at the other end of this. Uh, for uh, connected and networking sockets, uh, so for uh, TCP sockets, you can get the, the uh, context to the other end of that. Uh, that is a little bit different, though, because it's on a different machine. Now, you can have communications between an AC Linux machine and a machine without running AC Linux. Uh, one example would be uh, you're running a, a web server on the net, and the majority of the machines on the internet aren't using AC Linux for global networking. So the connection comes in, and you can have a, 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 um, essentially a firewall-type uh, module that says, uh, I want, when I have connections coming from certain machines, I want to label it with a certain type. And then the database server, when it sees the connection coming in, you'll see the, the, the connection coming in a certain uh, 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 type, and uh, then apply its access control methods appropriately. 
Also, uh, if you have two machines running AC Linux, you have IPsec being used to uh, encrypt the, the networking between them and sign it, and uh, have the AC Linux security context of the process being encoded in the IPsec packets. And so therefore, uh, when your client machine connects to you, if it's using IPsec, you, your kernel will know uh, what their, the process uh, security context was, pass that up to the application when it calls get peercon, and the application will then uh, grant access appropriate to that, that user. Uh, this, is, of course, depends on, on machines have both having this uh, equivalent security policy, and you only enable this for certain machines. So you wouldn't enable this for random machines of the net. Um, it is possible to have, uh, also, I believe it's possible to have automatic IPsec encryption to any machine on the net and slow more for the world. You wouldn't uh, enable uh, uh, arbitrary AC Linux labeling from machines, random machines in the world, because that wouldn't make any sense. You could do, I guess, a test thing. I mean, I, I can do it myself just to show people how, how it works. You know, here, try it out. Uh, I know you're going to be uh, fooling me, but you know, that's part of the, the aim of the game. But uh, for a production machine, you wouldn't be doing that. Of course, for a production machine, you, you wouldn't be uh, uh, exposing a PostgreSQL server to the world either, I think. But uh, what, what a more realistic scenario would be, you have a PostgreSQL server uh, in the back of your network, and you have several different web servers talking to it. You might have an internet web server talking to it, which is fully labeled networking all the way through and can uh, uh, expose the, the, the context uh, used for, for the user process. So you might have a, a, a user, uh, one of your internal users, connected to a web server, and uh, they have a, a label assigned to their connection to, to the web server machine. That's, that labeling is passed through the web server stack and to the database server. The database server then knows uh, what, the, what the labeling is and will then serve data to them appropriately. And this means that if a, a user compromises the, the web server, and makes an issue a, a inappropriate SQL query, they wouldn't get the wrong data. Uh, the, the, the database server would know what their security context was when they originated, and only serve them appropriate data. Now, um, one, one thing about SQL Linux is that, in terms of Unix X controls, is that uh, there is no inherent requirement that there be a super user. So in Unix permissions, UID 0 is God. They, they can do anything they want. Uh, and Unix is just written that way, and I don't think it's really feasible to change it. Whereas it's quite feasible to run an S Linux system without having any particular uh, security context having universal access. And with uh, versions of the policy, uh, the, the term the, the strict configuration, uh, you will have no domain having uh, universal access. So if you're to log in as root to an S Linux strict machine, for the purpose of this administration, your, your domain would be sysadm underscore t, and that does not have universal access. It has almost universal access, but a few things are missing. Uh, one of which is uh, the ability to, to directly read the shadow file. So for example, uh, you, you can't do, uh, there are several things which would make sense in a non-S Linux context that wouldn't make sense in a S Linux context. One of which is just uh, arbitrarily uh, copying the shadow password file around. Uh, with a, a non-S Linux system, you have shadow password file is mode 600, copy it somewhere else being mode 600 as well, and everything's cool. It's uh, no data being given away. When you see Linux, you have the shadow password file being labeled shadow underscore t. If you copy it to another file under the EC directory, like you know, cp uh, shadow shadow dot back or something, you get the type uh, etc underscore t, which is read on more processes. And therefore, a hostile root process could get your shadow password file. So to prevent that sort of mistake, uh, by default, with a strict policy, we, we've been uh, not permitting reading the shadow password file. This is one example of um, how we don't have a, a domain with, with universal access. And in PostgreSQL, it also has a super user account. And uh, the uh, current SC PostgreSQL policy doesn't uh, allow this account for full access. This is a policy decision. You could easily revise that. You could download the, the, the uh, SLINS policy that's being used right now for PostgreSQL and say, I don't like it being like that. I'll change the policy and do it my way. And that's great. That's your choice. But uh, the default configuration right now for this stage of development is not allowed for universal access. This is one of many ways of configuring it. Now, there's uh, real access controls. And SC PostgreSQL, as uh, one of several classes of uh, access controls, it, there's several stages of SC Linux uh, interaction with PostgreSQL. And the final stage is to filter the results so that you don't see any rows that have uh, security context that you're not permitted to read. And so you can do a select and uh, under a, um, a different user, you might see uh, or a different security context, you might see a different set of results. Now, uh, this means, of course, if you try and do an insert, you might do a select and see there is, for example, uh, if there's a universal, a, 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 um, a primary key of an integer, 
a US selector, you can see there's, there's no uh, row with a primary key of one. And you try and do an insert with a primary key of one, and it fails. But you know that there actually is a row with, with a key of one, but you just uh, can't see it, it's not permitted to see it. Uh, this is uh, a way of find, finding certain uh, parts of data out of it, and something that's really uh, unavoidable given the way the database is, is designed. Uh, for, uh, for, for, for uh, file systems, there is the, the one of the ways that this issue has been addressed is by having what's called polling sensitive directories. And so you have two different users see two different versions of a directory determined by the security context. But uh, I don't think this is going to happen for a database server for a while. Uh, I'm not sure you'd really want to do that, actually. So uh, this means, of course, that uh, if you want to have a row that's in a table that's going to be not visible to all the, user, all the people who can read that table, you want to not have the, the primary key be secret data. Um, is this a, a general uh, database design guide anyway, that you don't have your primary key be a, a secret? I'm curious. <laughs> Who can do that, of course. Well, true, make it a number then, it's not a secret, yeah. Yeah. Now, there's also a column of likes controls. And so it checks the columns that are, that are uh, appearing in the queries. And uh, if a query is for a column that uh, uh, is not accessible to the, to the user, then the, the query will be rejected. So, for example, uh, if you uh, do a, a select uh, star from uh, table, and there's one column in that table you're not permitted to read, then your select star will fail. And the current implementation is, that, well, the current default configuration is that uh, you will then see uh, uh, a log message up to your screen if you're using the, the uh, PSQL uh, front end, and I'll tell you uh, what, ta what uh, column it is. And uh, I'm not certain this is the way we want, uh, that we want to do it, but this is uh, still a development stage. Uh, I've, I'll send, I'm going to send a message to uh, Kygo later on, uh, suggesting perhaps we should have a, a more configuration options for this. Currently, the configuration we have is uh, to log it or to not log it. If you log it, it goes to the screen of the user and to the system logs. If you don't log it, then it goes uh, you don't get yours to either place. And uh, I'd like to see an a, a option of uh, log all details to the system log and none of it to the user, just to the user that, that failed. And I think we're, this might happen in the future. But it's just a matter of tweaking the design right now. And uh, this slide just shows the, the query tree being used uh, in uh, PostgreSQL. And so it uh, checks the, the uh, columns uh, and also uh, checks the, the operators. Uh, so in PostgreSQL, you, you can uh, define your own operators and so there's a, a check on each operator. And this also means checks on internal operators, which uh, the policy will by default allow. So things like uh, int uh, formal is a uh, multiplication of integers and it's allowed by, by default. Now, here's, here's an example of uh, doing a select with a where clause. And so, uh, for the, uh, so we have two uh, columns that are being selected on, and you have DB column, uh, DB column is the, the um, object class for the text being used, and select is the operation, so select is being committed there. And for the ID column, we have uh, DB column uh, use. Uh, so it's, it's being used in a where clause. And so uh, this means that you, uh, you might have some uh, columns that uh, it's not uh, necessary for a user to be able to re read them directly and select them out of the database, so, but you'll need them to uh, sort on them or, or uh, have, a, have them as where clause. And uh, so if it's going to be used for a where or, or an order by, then you have a, a use mission being granted. Um, the downside of this, of course, is that it allows a, a binary search to uh, guess what they are. So, you, uh, and um, I, I, I suspect, so for, for an integer, for example, doing a binary search which should be fairly easy to, to find out what the value is, if the value is secret. And for a string, I think perhaps you, by slicing the string, you could even do that as well. Uh, but it's it, 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 it some extra options in terms of making it harder for the attacker. And um, uh, if, it's, uh, if actually getting the hostile query is a difficult process, for example, cracking the, the um, a web server, there might be a fairly low bandwidth at the, the communication channel, which might pre preclude binary uh, searches. Now, also we have the uh, DB procedure uh, object class, and uh, it's being, it allows execution for the inter for mile and uh, for less than uh, function. And for the table itself, we, we have uh, select and use, so that's granting access to the entire table. 
And any uh, tuples that I mentioned before, any tuples that uh, are not permitted to be read by the, the uh, row label, will be filtered from the result set. And this also means that uh, if you have uh, a, uh, a join, you might have uh, the, the rows being labelled differently on the two tables, which means that uh, some of the um, cells in the result from the, uh, the joined table will be empty because uh, table A allowed the rows to be read, table B didn't, so uh, we don't see the matching data from table B. Uh, this is uh, by design, and uh, if you don't want that result, then you would uh, probably take care to uh, label them consistently. Uh, do we have any questions at this stage before I go, go further? Sir, yep. Yeah, that's right, yes. If there's uh, two, ca two or more tables being joined, then uh, each table must have its own callout for the security context. Yes, that's right. Just an extra uh, cell being read for each table. Yep. Um, the the uh, database server uh, controls the access, so uh, the libraries actually all get the same result. Uh, th there is, um, I, b I believe that all interfaces PostgreSQL have, have an option for a, uh, a text string being returned as an error message. So if you have it configured to allow the audit messages to be returned, then you get an Linux audit message uh, as your error message for why you couldn't access the data you wanted to access. That's in the case of uh, either table access being denied or column access being denied for column you requested. Um, so, and uh, for things where it's just filtered uh, rows, for example, where there are two rows that match, one of which is above your level, then you just get one row and that's it. And you won't uh, know that you've missed one. Uh, I'm sorry? Yes, it's right there in the, in the middle. It's in the middle of everything. Uh, so in the process of, of forming a, a query, uh, there's uh, two stages of excellent access checks. One is uh, at the initial stage when it's uh, tokenizing it, and, forming, and preparing the query tree, it uh, uh, checks the access to the databases, the database tables, uh, and the columns. And if uh, those accesses aren't all permitted, then you're bought right there. If those accesses are permitted, then uh, you perform the query, look at the, the labels on the rows, and um, then filter the results. And you could have a case where you have a, a legitimate query being formed, you allow access to the database, to, to the uh, columns, and the, the tables, uh, and then you have uh, zero results returned because every single row that was returned had the, a label that did not permit you to read it. And that's a, a valid response. I've got a graph layer later, later on at the end, but uh, I believe it's, it's, uh, the worst case scenario is about 10%. And uh, it depends on the exact test, of course. If you have a test that's uh, very IO intensive, like say you've got a, you know, uh, 10 terabytes of data and you're going to search through it all, uh, you wouldn't notice it. You couldn't notice it. Compared to this, six is nothing. If you have a, a case of, um, say, uh, authenticating users as they log in with usernames and passwords, and you have, say, you know, 10,000 users, 10,000 is a moderate number of users, but you're talking about what? Uh, maybe 10 megs of data, in terms of gig of RAM, it's all in RAM, notice the access, then you'll notice, you know, 5 10% performance loss perhaps. Depends on the application. And uh, also, I don't think that uh, 10, even 10% even of the worst case scenario, I don't think that's a huge obstacle. You can see the, the cost of having your, your database uh, stolen. 10% performance loss isn't really very much. It's like, you know, another two months of Intel's development, or AMD's development. <laughs> yes? Yep. 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 Uh, the same error that you get if you, if you try to insert the via that constraint, but you could see the row was there. Yes, I guess it's there. Yep. Absolutely. So you, you, you just have to... Uh, every uh, unique column that that's, uh, can't be, uh, that can't be read uh, due to column access uh, could be uh, guessed in that manner, yes. So you just have to uh, not have it like that. I mean, um, one, one example would be, I mean, you, you could have a, a um, uh, instead of having a, a unique column with actual real data, you have a unique column with a, an index into another table which has the data in question. And if you know that, you know, 
uh, the, other, the, 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 the table with secret data has an index number 10. Well, I can't read the table, I don't want an index 10 here, so it doesn't help me. But you're right, I mean, uh, some simpl simplistic designs of databases, which um, some people would recommend against due to uh, normalization uh, guidelines. I'm not enough database experts to say whether these normalization guidelines are good or not, but I'll say that some people prefer to uh, not fully normalize databases to a degree that uh, they, would, they wouldn't have uh, th this uh, unique data in, in that method. If I choose to do that, then they'll have no problems. If I don't, then uh, they could have the database guess, uh, the data guess in that manner. Okay, any more questions at this stage? Okay. So now we have a, uh, a DB column uh, update uh, request for the update uh, SQL op operation uh, for the size column. And uh, you have a, a uh, select and update for the price column. And so uh, one thing to know is that every column has all the access uh, granted independently. So you could permit a user to update one column and not update another one. So the user could, for example, uh, read column B, update column A, vice versa. And uh, we have procedure execute operations for the uh, uh, volume equality and uh, interest multiplication. Okay, I think I've covered that enough. One thing I'll, I'll mention before going go any further is, um, now, uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with set UID programs. Uh, in SC Linux, in terms of file system access, has a, an equivalent to uh, set UID programs we call uh, domain automatic transitions. So, for example, if you run a, a, a privilege program, let's say you, you want to change your password. Uh, a, normal pro a, a regular set UID root program that's run by an unprivileged user in SE Linux can't write to the shadow password file or read it. So the, show, the, the program changes password in elevated privileges. So you have uh, a type uh, password underscore x underscore t, uh, and when a, a user runs that program, uh, it transitions into a different domain, which is equivalent to a set UID uh, program in some ways which then gives elevated privileges to uh, change the password. One thing to note about SE Linux's uh, uh, domain transitions is it determined, it's determined by the, the uh, context that they were using before they ran the program, uh, the type of the file on disk, uh, are combined to determine the, the, the resulting type, as opposed to Unix set your programs where all that matters is set your bit, bit on the process. Or sorry, set, I meant to say set your bit on the file on disk. So you could have, a, a, uh, you could have any user run a set uh, program, and if they're permitted to execute it, then it gives the same result. Whereas with SE Linux, you have a program given domain transition, 10 different users run it and get 10 different uh, resulting contexts. So that they're using a drive context. So it means that uh, a process can give them elevated privileges for doing the operations it needs to do, but still constrain them within uh, what the user is permitted to do. And we have the same thing in SE uh, PostgreSQL. So you have a, a, a database uh, function to um, uh, uh, access data the user can't normally access. So one, one example that I'll, I'll give is um, of a, a credit card reporting uh, information. So you've got a database full of credit card numbers. You don't want the, the your application to be able to display uh, this, this full data to, to uh, the web based user, because then you're one SQL mistake away from uh, giving it all away. So instead you have a privileged function, which uh, is allowed to, to uh, read the column in question, and then it will uh, only give the, the first four digits or first last digits, depending on your country and the rules you, you have for credit cards. And that way the user can tell if it's the credit card of theirs that they want to use. If you've got several credit cards, you don't know which one it is, but you see the last four digits, you can recognize it. But uh, giving that last four digits away to a hostile party won't necessarily be as bad. I won't go into an argument about whether this is actually a good design for credit card management, but it's the design of how you can uh, uh, obscure access to data and only have trusted functions running with elevated privileges. So I'll do the demonstration next. I'll just show the graph here. So this is a graph uh, of the um, uh, PostgreSQL 8.4 Devel versus SE PostgreSQL. And you see that uh, the difference uh, is not very much. Uh, the SE Linux enhanced version is uh, slightly low performance, but it's not a huge difference. And uh, I think that if, if security matters to you, you wouldn't be saying, you know, can I afford uh, a 5% or 10% performance loss? You'd be saying, you know, can I afford not to uh, have the, the better security? Now, as I mentioned before, the um, SE PostgreSQL is based around a, a security framework. So it's called uh, PGACE, and it's a common framework for any uh, plugins. Uh, at this stage, implemented um, uh, by basically uh, uh, macros in the, the C programming language. 
So you have hash define uh, rules uh, mapping the, the uh, various uh, hooks. So uh, this means you, I guess you, you avoid performance overheads by calling the module, but it um, makes it um, only uh, compile time configuration. And so here's an example of um, uh, some code for a heap insert operation, which uh, calls to uh, uh, AC Linux. And you've got the uh, PGAC feature of AC Linux, which uh, is uh, called by the code to determine whether the operation is permitted or not. I'm sorry, I can't give you a good uh, explanation of this. Okay, the, the slide uh, says that it's unclear whether we'll get SC PostgreSQL PostgreSQL on the next version of PostgreSQL vanilla, whereas the uh, Wikipedia page says that it's already there. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not really certain. Uh, what's that? Okay, did you try uh, the help option of dot slash configure? Yeah. Hmm, okay. Maybe the wiki uh, page is out of date then. Maybe the wiki page is wrong in this regard. Well, I'll, actually, I'll, I'll read out the URL for the wiki page. Okay, uh, wiki.postgresql.org slash wiki slash se postgresql with se uh, p at the start and sql at the end being capitalized. Now there's uh, for Fedora 8 and later there's a se postgresql package apparently. Uh, I've got a demo machine here with uh, uh, Fedora 10. Now the, the future vision which uh, I'll discuss in more detail in my talk for the, for the well, Kai's talk which I'm giving for the uh, security mini conf uh, about the uh, lap uh, uh, security in the lap stack. So this is a, the diagram where we're at. In the past we had just uh, AC Linux in the, in, in the operating system level and everything else uh, not being uh, constrained. Uh, today with SC PostgreSQL you have the database having AC Linux access controls and the future vision is to have uh, the web server with Apache processes run in different security contexts and uh, uh, applications such as uh, written in languages such as Tomcat and PHP have a security context associated with them and uh, have labeled networking for the uh, HTTP access as well. So you have an intranet server, you can have uh, served data to several different departments, have the, the, the uh, context being tracked right through Apache, uh, through the database, and uh, protect the, the data from uh, inappropriate internal use. Okay, any questions now before I do the demo? No? Okay. What's that? Where is it say AC Linux passed? Ah, okay. I think that's a, a term the Kai is using for his uh, modified version of Apache. Uh, uh, this is a, that's a much uh, more experimental piece of work than AC PostgreSQL, so uh, things will be done up in the air in that, re that regard. Okay, so I'll plug the 